Hi, everybody. Um, it's Tim. Um, welcome to the Productivity Toolkit webinar. Thank you very much for um, signing up and coming along today. Um, I'm really nervous about it. This is the first webinar of this type that I've done, um, and especially I'm doing it for the first time on a new webinar platform. So um, uh, exposing myself to all sorts of possible hiccups, but we'll see how we get on. Um, I'm going to launch into it shortly, just to give you a heads up that um, this is a bit of a one-way. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Um, this is a bit of a one-way conversation. I'm kind of broadcasting at you. Um, we do have the, the chat function on, but um, I won't be able to hear anything you say if you if you try and speak to me. Um, but do drop a note in, in chat or or add a question at the bottom of the pane there if you have anything um, that you want to ask, and I'll try and get onto it today. We have quite a bit to get through, so I'm going to kind of plow through this at quite a pace, I think. Um, I've given myself 45 minutes to, to get through it. Um, it's the last, what's well, getting towards the end of Friday, and I'm sure we've all got weekends that we want to be getting on with. Um, so without further ado, um, let me crack on. So I'm going to press this button here, and you should be able to see my PowerPoint in full. So to start, <clears throat> let me just uh, say hello. And um, again, say thank you so much for, for coming along to the session. Um, I hope that there's lots of stuff in here, or some stuff in this webinar that you find useful and applicable, and that you find something in here that you can pick up and use, and that has an impact on your productivity in some way, hopefully in a positive way, of course. So we're going to start by, well, I'm going to start by uh, giving you a little bit of info about us, who I am and who ELT Jam is, or what ELT Jam is. Uh, and then we're going to start looking at um, some tools and strategies <clears throat> for sort of productivity hacks or tips uh, in the following areas. So we're going to look at sort of how we might manage, manage tasks more productively, how we might manage our workload, our time, uh, our communications, and then we're going to say goodbye. And hopefully it will be a um, productive webinar in itself. So a little bit about us. Um, hi guys that have just joined by the way, lovely to have you here, thanks for coming. Um, a little bit about ELT Jam. Uh, so it's probably worth just explaining a little bit of background. So we started as a blog in 2013 and uh, we started writing about ELT, English language teaching um, and educational technology or edtech. Uh, and the three original co-founders of the site that's Nick Robinson, Laurie Harrison, and myself. We all have uh, an ELT teaching background and had all, had all at some point worked at Cambridge University Press in publishing, uh, in the ELT sort of publishing department. Um, and in fact, when we started the blog, Laurie and I were still working there. Um, and we started the blog because we felt there wasn't a great deal of discussion taking place between and about the two worlds of ELT and EdTech. Uh, and we thought that there should be. And we started writing our own sort of commentary on those two worlds and where they intersected and where we felt they should intersect. And that blog quickly got quite a lot of traction within the ELT community. And we decided to put our money where our mouths were and to put some of our commentary into practice. And we all quit our jobs and set up ELT Jam Limited, um, which is a product development training and consultancy business that helps or strives to help companies create the best learning digital language products possible. Um, and that's kind of evolved into, like I say, a training um, provider. So we go into various companies and, and provide a suite of training to help them in all areas of product development, um, as well as kind of going back to our roots in sort of digital editorial skills from our publishing days. And we also run uh, events. So some of you may have heard of Innovate ELT, which is a, a conference of a brand that we're really proud of. We're running uh, our third one in 2017, and that's co-organized with Oxford TEFL uh, and takes place in Barcelona. And uh, the theme for next year is Power to the Learner, and they are always really fun events. So cracking onto the webinar itself, after giving you the swiftest of backgrounds on who we are, um, like I say, we, we want to take each of these four areas in turn, looking at productivity tips for managing tasks, workload, time, and communication. So let's start with managing tasks. These are all the things that emerge um, throughout your day. Uh, these little things that require your attention. And for us, a big thing to consider, or a big thing to start, um, or a good way of approaching those tasks, is to develop for yourself a, a second brain. 
Uh, and the second brain is what we refer to uh, a platform, or some sort of strategy that means that you keep all those tasks, you file all of those tasks somewhere externally so that you aren't carrying them around in your own brain, that you're not expected or depending upon your ability to just remember all of the tasks and all of the things that you've got to do that should become habitual or ideally habitual to throw all of those tasks as they come in at you into your second brain, mm -hmm. something else external to you that you can use to categorize, sort and deal with those tasks as they come in. Now, the thing that we use, a uh, personal favorite and a favorite of the company as well is Trello. And this is a task management uh, application that basically allows you to create tickets for all of the tasks that are coming your way. Um, and it's a really, really versatile platform. Uh, has a great mobile experience, so it's really good for when you're out and about. You can coordinate the, all of your Trello boards, which are a sort of system of lists of tickets, uh, wherever you are. Uh, and like I said, it's incredibly versatile. And as we see here on this demo, um, this mock-up, I've just used it in a very straightforward um, kind of to-do, doing, and done list. And the idea that is, as you enter the, you, well, you enter the information on each ticket uh, in the to-do to list. Uh, and then you move it across to doing when you're actively engaged with it. And the idea is to push all of those tickets across to the done list. And when you're done, you can archive all of them and clear your plate for the next batch of tickets to come in. But it is quite versatile and each ticket allows you to enter quite a great, or a great deal of information about the task at hand. So here we've got the title of the task, the name of the task. You can add all sorts of descriptive content uh, and format it in any way you want. You can add members to the tasks or assign it to somebody in your team or uh, somebody that you're working with. Add labels that you assign yourself. So you could assign these um, sort of labels by task type or by project or by topic or whatever you want to do. You can add checklists and due dates and all sorts of attachments, images, video, audio, um, and have sort of a, a back and forth commentary on the ticket as well. So as you assign it back and forth between people, if that's something you want to do, you can all add tickets and what you've done, or sorry, all add comments uh, on the back of the ticket describing what you have done uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so a lot that you can do in each ticket. So you can really put all of that information regarding that task directly into that one place. Um, and as I've mentioned several times, I think now it is really versatile. Um, and just that format of ticket and the list structure allows you to use it for all sorts of things. So um, one suggestion, and this is how we use it for one use in the LT Jam, is um, using it as a sort of sales pipeline. And as we see here, we've got leads coming in on the left-hand side. And as those leads move through to prospect or proposal to finalize, and ideally to one, or lost, depending. Um, but each of those tickets would have information about who the contact is, contact details, how we met them, and various sort of uh, points of contact we've had with them, and due dates for when that next point of contact needs to be. But, so that's one example. Uh, we also use it for coordinating all of our weekly priorities uh, in the company. So here you can see how we've uh, divided it across uh, paid work, sales, events, tasks, marketing, company and admin and as we go through the week ideally we move all of those tickets into our done column on the far right here um, and as you can see we've got all the people assigned to them we've got dates we've tagged them with different labels depending on the uh, how important the, the, the priority of that task to the company and all sorts of information so trello is a really good way a really good second brain for capturing all of your tasks and all of the tasks of your team and your company now, a favorite hack, Joe Budden, I couldn't survive without Trello. Brilliant. Um, so it's a really good uh, Chrome extension for Trello that means you don't have to continually open another tab to add a ticket into Trello every time a task comes your way. You can add it straight from your browser. Um, so in the Chrome Web, in Chrome web Store, I think it's called, um, there is a great extension that means you can just, whatever page you're on, whatever you're doing, open a ticket, add it to the correct list, uh, and add all the information you want to it and do it straight from your, your browser so you don't have to go too far it's at your fingertips. Now there are, are, are other second brains or project management systems um, and we have used quite a few over the, the last few years and um, Basecamp is a great one um, quite a sophisticated sort of project management platform um, that allows for quite sort of uh, really productive team interaction you can run all of your projects and all your teams and all your files and stuff in one place um, and there's also Asana, which is a very similar setup. 
um, have different project teams, uh, different tasks to those teams, um, and you can sort of monitor and assign and track tasks as they get uh, delegated to different people. Uh, we tend to use um, Basecamp in conjunction with Trello. So Trello, uh, as I showed you, we kind of track all of our high level priorities for the company and we use Basecamp for the nitty gritty for actually getting those priorities done. Um, so the teams that are responsible for delivering on those will use Basecamp for file sharing, coordinating and so on. Um, so that's a few tips, very quick tips, very Trello based tips for, for managing tasks. Like I say, it is all about finding a second brain, something external to you that you're able to use to capture all of those tasks without um, relying on your on your your memory basically um and inevitably uh, dropping something or missing a few of those tasks so once you've got that second brain in place and you've captured everything that's on your plate here are a few tips for managing that workload um those tasks can pretty quickly stack up as i'm sure you can relate to um so how do we start sorting through that pile to work out what requires your attention uh, and when and a great strategy for that is the Eisenhower matrix. Um, this is an approach attributed to the man himself for categorizing tasks. Um, Eisenhower said that you know, what is important is seldom urgent, and what is urgent is seldom important. So he kind of shared, uh, or came up with, I guess, a framework for distinguishing between those two attributes. Um, so urgent tasks are things that require your immediate attention. Um, so things like those emails in uh, red caps with several exclamation marks, uh, sort of phone calls, things that just emerge uh, that require you to respond in some way. And urgent tasks tend to put you in more of a reactive mode. Um, compare those to important tasks that are things that contribute to the long-term mission of your company or of your team or of, or of your projects that you're working on. Uh, important tasks are the more value adding tasks um, and help you progress towards your goal or are in kind of uh, alignment with the, the wider longer term mission, um, like I say, of your team, company or project. Um, so once you've got everything in your second brain or all your tasks are captured, um, it's worth sorting through them. So if a task is important and urgent, that is, if it requires your attention straight away, and it is uh, contributing to the, the wider, longer term missions of company, product or team, then do it now. Um, however, if it's important, but not necessarily urgent, um, decide a time to do it. So defer it and put a date um, to, to get back to it. Um, and if a task is urgent, but it's not important, as in it doesn't contribute to the wider, longer term goals of team, projects or company, then to, the suggestion here is to delegate it, find somebody who can do it for you. Um, and we'll look at some options that can help you do that um, if you don't have a, a team of people <laughs> uh, at hand to, to help you do that. Uh, and if it's not important and not urgent, then the question is, why is it on your task uh, list in the first place? Um, there's a pretty good argument there that it doesn't really need to be dealt with by you at all. So it's a really good framework for prioritizing uh, or, or ordering, I guess, the tasks that come into your, your second brain. But behind all of this is, um, a level of thinking that does, I guess, just kind of need to be humming in the background. Um, and that is for you to have uh, a pretty clear idea of what success looks like for you. And that's success, um, you know, what does success look like for you by the end of the day? What ideally do you want to have achieved? Uh, what about by the end of the week, by the end of the year, by the end of the project and so on? Um, just to make sure that you're always clear on what it is you are working towards and helps you prioritize those important tasks over those urgent ones and so on in the way that we've just discussed. And this is something that we use quite a lot at ELT Jam. We do sort of weekly roundups, um, top and tail the week with, you know, what is it that we are really trying to get out of this week? And it does really help. It really helps to kind of focus your efforts um, day to day uh, and across the weeks and months uh, as we all kind of stack those tasks up towards achieving the wider mission. Now, like I say, in the Eisenhower matrix, there was the suggestion that tasks could be delegated. Um, or to find somebody else to, to take on tasks uh, for you. And it's a really good service that uh, we have used. Um, it's called Fancy Hands, and this is a virtual assistant service. And for, I think it's about $30 a month, you get five requests, and each request uh, represents 20 minutes of task time. And you can assign these to virtual assistants, I think primarily in the States, um, with a description of what you want to do, and they will crack on and do it for you. And it's a really cost-effective and um, time-efficient way of delegating those tasks 
from your second brain into somebody else's. Um, so we've used this for various different things from looking at sort of travel arrangements at pulling together um, some, some research documents. I've asked Fancy Hands assistants to help me pull together um, the top five trending articles on Pokemon Go, for example, in preparation for some blog content. Um, we've asked them to do some various things on FTP sites for us, um, all sorts of things. Um, and as you can see, it's saved me sort of eight hours um, time that I'd otherwise spending doing those tasks and help me stay on the important ones. Um, really good, really uh, great service, and I'm not in any way <laughs> affiliated with them. Um, other services are available, I'm sure, um, but uh, this is the one that we've had the best experience with. And another great tip about Fancy Hands is that they integrate directly into your Trello board. So you can have Fancy Hands as a member on your team. So when you're capturing tickets in Trello, you can assign them directly to your Fancy Hands assistant. Uh, and they will take it from there for you. So, you know, making Trello, in each case, um, a really effective way of managing your tasks when you're able to delegate them so efficiently. Uh, there's also Fiverr, which is a great <laughs> site, a marketplace for all sorts of stuff. Um, for five bucks, people will do um, all sorts of des design, um, digital content development, help you with WordPress, advertising, logos, and all sorts of stuff. Um, and that's another good service for delegating some tasks. We've used them for transcription, for example, and um, helping us with some sort of formatting work. Um, and again, it tends to be quite good, and it's work that you're not doing. Um, and it, again, it helps you stick on the important stuff. Um, so yeah, a great service and would recommend. But I would recommend also doing a bit of research around the the, uh, the providers that you're using. Um, stick to the ones with good reviews. Um, but yeah, otherwise, a great, a great resource. So another technique for managing workloads is the use of story points. Um, so this is an arbitrary measure used by scrum teams um, and is used to measure the effort required to deliver on a particular feature effectively. Um, it's a number that tells sort of how hard that feature is to deliver and so it relates to its complexity, effort and the time required. Um, and it's something that we've kind of appropriated for our own, uh, own team and we assign each of our tasks in our second brain uh, a number uh, and that number, like I say, does roughly coordinate or correspond to the amount of effort. For us, it kind of it more closely aligns to the amount of time we're using um, on it, uh, so that we can capture or look across the team and work out how much um, uh, each individual team member has on their plate in terms of an actual point value, sort of a, a quantifiable value. Um, and there is a great plugin for Trello. Again, you're probably spotting a theme now. Um, Another extension is called Scrum for Trello, and it allows you to add those points to each of your tickets. Um, and it's a really effective way of, like I say, monitoring your workload, getting to realize or getting an early indication of when you are at maximum capacity, um, when you are unable to take on any more work, or when team members or project members um, are under capacity and perhaps need some, some work sort of pulled through. Uh, and as you saw earlier on, this is our huge team Trello board. Uh, and you can see in blue all of the story points assigned to each of our tasks tasks, and they total up at the top of each of our lists so we can see how many points we're pulling through for marketing and how many points we're pulling through for paid work and so on so a really good way to see how the company is um, operating or how it's pushing value i guess in all of those areas but with all of those tasks landing on your plate and with all your points added and totaled it's it can get quite difficult to get a bit of um I guess, mental space. And uh, it's quite difficult at times, I find, to, to really focus on what it is that you, you need to do, even though you've worked out what's important and uh, versus urgent and so on. And a really good service that I've used, a really good free app is uh, Taco. And this pulls in all of your tasks and all of the sort of various um, tasks and content from a load of different platforms and um, puts it to you or pre presents it to you in a really clean, clear light interface that allows you to select one task from all of those different <laughs> second brains or, or various other resources and just to focus on that one thing. Um, it, with the pull out here, you can see the full list of tasks that you have on your plate, but here it just allows you to focus on one thing and get that one done. Um, and that's a really great app for, for just kind of clearing your, your mental space, like I say, uh, and making sure that you're, you're working what uh, needs to be dealt with. 
So moving on to tips for managing time. And um, so you've got everything in your second brain. You've got it all um, sort of tagged with story points. So you know what's urgent versus important. And you know um, how your, your week is going to run or what success looks like for you. Um, so how about managing the, the time that you've got available to you? Well, for us, the, the, the big breakthrough came from actually spending time uh, tracking what we were doing. Um, it's difficult to manage time if you don't know where your time is, is going. And we use Toggle, which is um, a web app that tracks, and mobile as well, that allows you to track all of your time across all of the projects that you've got going on. Um, you can assign, you can create different projects, different tags. So we've got a, a some business development stuff and some with a marketing tag and so on. And every time you sit down to work on a particular task, you open Toggle, you click start, you type in what you're doing and click stop when your work on that particular task is done. Uh, and what it does over time uh, is create a great um, sort of gives you great data really on, on where you are spending your time. Uh, and the big breakthrough for us was just seeing how many hours we spent a week on emails um, and <laughs> sort of made us um, really address that particular uh, part of our sort of operation uh, but a really really useful tool great for, for freelancers and stuff it allows you to, to track your your build versus unbillable time and we have used this a, a great deal with our freelancers um, but a really good resource just for seeing what you're doing really um, and to make sure that you are allocating the right amount of time to tasks that are uh, sort of time time based uh, and as ever there is a great chrome plugin for toggle that puts a little toggle button this little timer button here uh, on pretty much every app and site that you are coming into contact with. So again, um, you don't need to go in and open toggle every time you are about to start a new task. You can hit that button um, directly within different apps uh, and applications and stuff, and it will start the timer for you. So as you saw, as you may have noticed previously on the back of the Trello ticket, there is a little toggle timer. So what I tend to do is when I'm going through my tasks on Trello, I can flip in the ticket, remind myself of what needs to be done and, and how far we've got, and start my timer directly here. And I'll pull into my, my toggle, um, my, my toggle uh, timer. Similarly, there's the, the same toggle button will pop up in your, your Google uh, calendar. As you see here, I've got a Gruffalo, um, Gruffalo background. Um, my daughter insisted on it. But again, you can open that, start a timer there. So whenever you're entering a new task, just click a button and it's capturing your time on that task directly in Toggle. But another great time management technique is the Pomodoro technique. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard about this. Uh, it's basically a, a system whereby you focus on one particular task for 25 minutes. Uh, it's a really good strategy for making sure you stay focused on the task and keeps you fresh. So you, you develop, uh, sorry, you focus on it for 25 minutes, and then at the end of that 25 minutes, you uh, take a five minute break, go away from your desk, have a cup of coffee, uh, come back and do, an, do either the same or another task for 25 minutes. And the idea is that you don't change tack in that period, you keep working on the same task, um, and as you build up these Pomodoros, um, you, you can see, you, you mark an X every time you complete one, you can see how many Xs you have used uh, to complete a particular task. And again, helps you, be, helps you build a picture for how long a particular task it takes, um, how productive you are, and so on. And again, it's, it's great for uh, building quotes for, for projects once you've worked out how long a particular task takes you. Um, and I find it a particularly good way of just keeping a bit more alert, a bit more fresh, um, with that kind of um, that imposed five minute break away from the desk. And naturally, there is a great way of integrating this uh, with Toggle. Uh, in that Toggle button I showed you, there is actually a Pomodoro timer integrated directly into it. So when you open your Trello ticket, you press your Toggle button, your timer is going, it can automatically give you a Pomodoro alarm after 25 minutes and insist that you go um, and have a walk around and get back to your task later on. So a really nice um, integration there that I find particularly useful. Excuse me one moment while I have a swig of water. Okay, so um, another task, or sorry, another time management technique that I find quite, uh, quite useful. Um, haven't used it so much recently, but it's the use of office hours. So on 
uh, Google Calendar, and I think other calendars as well, you are able to block out time that you're just not available for meetings uh, and people can't poach that time off you. You can kind of lock it down as, as time that you are going to use for particular tasks. Um, and also this does extend, uh, you see quite a few people doing this now in, in uh, email signatures. Um, actually alerting people to when they are responding to email uh, and I think what this does this the whole idea of office hours I think just helps you uh, manage other people's expectations of, of your availability to let them know that you do have time set aside for uh, communicating and working on particular projects but otherwise that time is spent uh, you know you're spending that time in pursuit of your own projects or particular tasks or, or whatever um, so yeah a good a good way of kind of marshalling, I guess, your time resource on your calendar. Uh, managing communications. Um, so as a great thing that we do, and I, I've really got cotton onto this quite a lot uh, over the last year or so, um, when it comes to managing particularly my email, which I think has, uh, over the past few years, I think, or four, uh, a year or so ago, was quite untamed. And um, a strategy that I found really, really helped me was uh, inbox zero and this was a what well, this is uh, an approach developed by uh, Merlin Mann uh, and according to Mann the zero in inbox zero uh, is not a reference to the number of messages in your inbox but it's the amount of time that your uh, your brain is is in the inbox um, so it's a really good sort of strategy for kind of claiming back I guess ownership of, of the inbox so it doesn't uh, doesn't rule you outright which for me has often been the case um, but the first rule of inbox zero is not to leave the email client open um, which is something that I've often suffered from but by closing that down again it means that you are uh, mentally engaged in the task at hand and not tempted to, um, to respond to emails as they come in but the principles of inbox zero uh, are as follows so every time you do engage with your inbox and man suggests that you do this at kind of pre-defined or pre-specified times of your day um, when you're engaging with a new, uh, new email uh, you should be asking yourself is this email relevant to me um, and have I got time right now to do anything with this to, to respond to this um, and there are four things that you should be doing once you've asked yourself those questions um, you should delete it um, so if it's not relevant to you then delete it or archive it get it out of your inbox um, you should defer it, which means if it takes longer than two minutes to respond to, find a time to get back to it uh, and sort of specify a time later on in your day or, or, or whatever works for you to actually deal with all of those deferred emails at once. Uh, you should delegate it, so if it can be answered by somebody else um, or if it's a query that somebody else is better placed to respond to, then forward it through to them uh, or deal with it. If it takes two minutes or less to, to respond to, then just get it done and get it out of your inbox. So inbox zero is all about having a very sort of crisp <laughs> uh, approach to, to dealing with the inbox. Um, and I found that's worked marvelously for me. And we can't let this one go without referencing Gmail to Trello, which is another Chrome plugin that sits directly in your inbox in Gmail and means that you can create Trello tickets straight from your inbox um, for those emails. So those emails that you're deferring, you can defer them straight into a Trello card um, from your inbox. So here's an example of mine. Here's a, a, an email regarding the learning experience design workshop that we're running on the 24th of November. And I'm able to open my uh, Trello um, extension, uh, add the information I need to choose the list and put it straight into Trello, get it out of my inbox, into my second brain, so I can deal with that at uh, another another time. Now, the life-changing Slack um, is something that has really impacted uh, our team. Slack is a really great sort of instant messaging uh, app that has kind of replaced uh, emails and certainly set out to do that, I think. It's kind of, it, it's, it, its intention was to save or like pretty much get rid of the amount of time that you spend wallowing in your inbox. Um, it's very much an instant messaging platform. It allows you to set up different teams, different project teams, different members. Uh, and it's, I mean, for us, it's just proved a very quick uh, sort of agile way of communicating with each other. The sort of instant messaging interface means that your messages are shorter, sharper, um, means you're able to deal with them a lot quicker. 
you're not kind of putting together a, a well-crafted email necessarily, um, especially just if it's for team members, you can kind of reach out to each other quickly and get uh, a response quickly as well. Uh, it's, we were talking about this yesterday, and for us it's similar to sort of working in, a, in an office, we all work remotely, but it's like working in an office and just being able to tap somebody on the shoulder and ask them a quick question, and they'll get back to you, get back to you quite quickly. Excuse me. And there are loads of great um, integrations for Slack that would, I think, basically take up uh, an entire session uh, itself. Um, but suffice to say, it's a really quick, light way of keep managing your communications in a team. One of my favorite integrations for, for Slack, um, and FYI Trello does integrate to Slack really nicely. Um, I haven't got a, a, a screenshot of it here, but you're able to create Trello tickets from Slack as well. Um, but another one, one of my favorites is the meeting bot uh, integration for, for Slack. And it allows you to set up meetings directly in your Slack chat box. So here I've asked meeting bot to set up a meeting with Laurie for next week. Um, and meeting, but we'll check our calendars and we'll find out, find the time that suits uh, both of us. And I can designate a duration of 30 minutes, whenever I want, give it a name, give it a sort of desk, a location, sorry, and all sorts of information. And meeting bot will just go and uh, schedule that appointment in both of our calendars. It means that we don't have to go out into another application and uh, I don't know, compare calendars or I don't have to mm. ask Laurie when he's free. I can just do it directly in meeting bot and it will be booked for us um, kind of, uh, automatically. Another great communications technique that we've appropriated in the Delta Jam is the daily stand-up. So these are uh, short, no longer than 15 minute meetings that happen first thing in the morning um, are, and are intended to give each of the people in your team um, the opportunity to answer three questions. Uh, what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? Uh, do you have any blockers? And I guess this again feeds into kind of keeping an eye on what success looks like for the team in terms of deliverables for that day and for that week and how things are progressing towards the sort of achievement of set goals uh, and missions. Uh, and also it's a really good way of just keeping, <laughs> keeping tabs on what everybody's doing in your team as well. Um, it's really good just to hear what everybody's working on uh, and also when you talk about any blockers that team members have uh, it's a great way of, of kind of sourcing any solutions within within the team see if anybody can assist them but uh, it's also yeah it's definitely intended to remove any blockers to team members um, as they're working through the tasks but should be done really quickly ideally actually standing up uh, we do ours remotely um, but uh, a really good way of just getting team focused and uh, we end our week, our Friday, with a look through that mighty Trello board I shared with you, uh, going through um, what the sort of really high priority tasks are that need to be done, or kind of just reviewing how many story points we've, we've pushed in that week and so on. Just a good way of keeping everybody up to speed with how the company is progressing towards various goals. Elmo is a, a great strategy for uh, meetings, um, for actually physical or, to be fair, remote meetings. Um, Elmo stands for enough, let's move on. Uh, and it's something that every meeting we have with a new client or a new contact, we kind of introduce them to. And it's a really good way of keeping the meeting on track uh, and objective focused. Um, if you find that conversation turns uh, sort of starts diverging away from what the matter of matter at hand is anybody in the room is able to shout elmo um, <laughs> which means let's get back to what we're talking about um, and if, if you know at each point you're shouting elmo it should be acknowledged that maybe there's a discussion there that doesn't need to be had but not right now that the meeting you're in has uh, a set objective already um, but it does kind of raise the question or does promote or uh, yeah it does kind of make you uh, ask the question every time you are having a meeting, uh, why are we here? I've been in s several meetings, countless meetings um, in the past where there was no particularly clear agenda or objective to it. It was just a meeting that was going through the motions. Um, and if the question why are we here can't be satisfactorily asked, then um, you don't need to be there. Uh, similarly, if, if you're raising too many Elmos, then it perhaps suggests that there isn't a clear enough um, objective to that meeting. Uh, so in the last five minutes or so, I'm going to really run through um, some automation uh, tips that we have 
been using and uh, then I'll let you all get back to your Friday afternoons and to your whole weekends. Um, so automation, so a great app or service for, for automating tasks is if this then that uh, and this is a service that connects um, a whole range of different applications uh, and it's basically it, it's based on the idea that one app is a trigger uh, which causes a sort of a, a cause or another action in a completely unrelated application um, and it allows you to make what they call recipes so combining those different apps in, in a number of different ways um, Sapia is one that does the same it's very similar service uh, I've used that quite a lot for scheduling our events um, so similarly it, it connects various different applications in your network and gets them talking to each other so an action in one will trigger uh, a subsequent action in another. So an example for how that could be used, and this is an example from if this then that, is um, you can get your GPS in your phone to talk to your Google Drive. Um, so, and it will log how much time you spent at a particular location. So it will track who you are, uh, and you can tell it to kind of to log your time when you get to the office you can specify where your office location is um, and also when you leave that location as well and that will be done automatically so it's your location basically talking to your, your google doc you can also uh, connect your gmail to your ios reminders on your iphone so every time you star uh, an email in your inbox it can get added to your ios reminders list automatically excuse me So a really good way of kind of keeping that second brain um, system working really well and keeping those to-dos um, kind of flowing between your, your mobile and your inbox. You can save or you can get your Gmail to speak to your, your Google um, Drive automatically and get it to save uh, your email attachments to a specified folder whenever they come in. Uh, I've used this a lot for managing invoices. So I can set it up so that when an email comes in with an attachment and an invoice, it gets saved to my my finance folder up on the up on the cloud so I don't have to do anything and it all gets tracked and logged for me. Uh, and also you can get your calendar to speak to Slack. So before a calendar event starts, post a reminder to a particular Slack channel. So all of these things are kind of talking to each other. Uh, Zapier I used for, uh, like I say, scaling uh, webinars and, and meetings and so on. And I've used that by connecting our Eventbrite page to our MailChimp. So every time somebody signs up for an event, that gets automatically pulled through to MailChimp and that will then automatically trigger an automated email to them. Um, so many of you would have got the link to this um, webinar through an automated MailChimp mail out. Um, that, folks, is pretty much a wrap. Um, I have absolutely bolted through that. I hope that there was something useful in there. Is Zapier free, Richard asks. Um, it is really up to a point. I think it's, it's priced on, um, I think, the frequency or volume of some of the zaps, they call them, that you use zaps of those recipes that, um, that if this, then that uses. Um, but I'm happy to, if you have any questions, please do feel free to um, drop me an email. Um, and if you felt that this has been a useful session, um, we would really appreciate it if you could share that thought with your Twitter community um, and perhaps share some of the stuff that you found particularly useful. And I've also put in a poll um, at the bottom of the uh, Crowdcast uh, screen. This is asking you to reflect on whether you found this useful or not. Um, so it'll be great if you can kind of give me some feedback on that. Um, but otherwise, thanks so much for coming along. It really means a great deal that you took time out to see this. Um, and do let me know what you found useful. And do stay tuned for more ELT Jam webinars. It's been great. So thanks very much. <laughs>